Hello coaches, welcome to this month's class. We are going to cover a radical coaching concept this month, and it's one that I like to call a journey to maintenance, okay? Some of you might be familiar with what we mean when we talk about maintenance, okay? You're gonna see a lot, like I, you know, I say a lot, you're gonna see maybe physique competitors or people that are really into macro counting and, um, you know, more like body manipulation. They, they might talk about maintenance a bit because maintenance is when we just stay consistent in a pretty healthy state, okay? Or we've attained a certain level of our health or our fitness or whatever, and we're just kind of figuring out how to stay there, how to not backpedal or keep going past a certain point, kind of, you know, get comfortable in that place. And maintenance is really important. They've actually shown that one of the biggest predictors for obesity is yo-yo dieting. So a lot of people, when they're trying to lose body fat or things like that, they will have issue if they, their body's really accustomed to yo-yo dieting and not, then it doesn't, it doesn't spend much time in a state of maintenance where their metabolism and their hormones and everything can just align and get comfortable because there's just so much fluctuation. And there's multiple reasons why I think we need to talk about this. So, so we've heard it a lot, obviously, when it comes down to fat loss, uh, weight loss, and things like that, you know, body image. But I think that we need to advance some of our strategies as coaches, especially with gut health, for a few reasons. So like you guys clearly know, whether you're newer coaches or you're veteran, when we go, we have the option to go through protocol, right? And even though we have our structured recommendations for protocol, it's not a one size fits all. There's flexibility. Uh, and like, like we say in there, you know, it, it depends on the person. So, it, so it's, not, it's a non-judgment zone. It's more about the data we gather. But it also incorporates information and strategies that we do see lead to the best results for re-inoculating the gut. And obviously, if the gut is off balance, if it's messed up, if, if it's dysregulated, if, it's, if they've got dysbiosis going on, then we're going to see a problem with the function of the whole body. And this is going to be not just in conditions and sickness and things like that, but it's also, we're going to see it in, in metabolism and just functionality, right? We are at a crazy place right now where everyone's talking about hormones and you're hearing more and more women talk about getting stuck, talking about doing all the right things and actually maybe gaining weight or, you know, dealing with worse thyroid conditions and things like that. And that almost the harder that they work to, to, to dial down their diet or increase their fitness, the worse they start to feel, the more it will work against them. And this, you're here, I'm hearing this all the time. I've experienced it myself. Um, there's reasons for this and it's because the body is just not resilient. You know, it needs rest. It's broken down to some degree from stress, from lifestyle changes, different things that come at different times with age. And so when we go through the gut restoration protocol, we do it in a way we'll keep, we'll keeping, you know, tabs with our, our clients and ourselves if we're doing it ourselves and really making sure that this is suiting them and getting data in the process as to how their body and their mind and their emotions respond to different components and different parts of the process. So one thing we know though, and I think when we just covered it in a class last month or the month before, but we, we really talked about FODMAPs and the issue with, and how the necessary part of reintroducing FODMAPs. So when we talked about FODMAPs, obviously there's a huge stigma around things like that because they are really rough usually for people that are in a flare with Crohn's and colitis or dealing with things like IBS and even sometimes SIBO. Uh, different FODMAP foods can produce just a lot within the gut, right? And so we can see a lot of reactivity. So when people are struggling with IBS symptoms like diarrhea and bloating, etc., then often, and what has been you know programmed through a lot of practitioners is just avoid FODMAPs maps or get out of that. And that's why we have that part of the protocol where you can adjust protocol or the life plate and the food list to people with varying conditions, including if they are low FODMAP. But that is only a temporary thing. It is only a temporary thing. So if the gut is really inflamed and the body is really out of whack, then maybe we, you know, we want to pull FODMAPs for a while. But like we covered in that class, we don't want to keep it that way forever because FODMAPs are actually a really 
healthy. Most FODMAPs are really healthy for the gut microbiome. They're really essential. A lot of high FODMAP foods are what feed our gram-positive commensal species. And so we don't just want to live without them all the time or condition our body not to have them. What we need to do is we pull out the stuff that's that's really irritating it and then we got to re structure, you know, rehabilitate the gut microbiome and in the body. And then we can start building back in these things. Okay. So that's very much why we're covering this class today is because what do we do after protocol? What are people working toward? And I think that there's a common frustration with a lot of individuals, even coaches, even us with ourselves. And that is in always having kind of a moving target. We kind of work for what I think a lot of people work toward what they don't want anymore. They don't want the excess weight. They don't want the symptoms or the, the disease or the, the issues like that, but we don't actually work towards what we actually do want. We don't have a final destination very easily. And if we don't have, it's just like in your businesses, right? And so if we don't have this final destination or it's ill-defined and it's rooted in things that are unhealthy, like just a number on the scale, Okay. Or, a, or a way that I looked 10, 15 years ago before I had children or things like that. Right. Or when I feel this is, this is what a lot of people do. It's when it, when I feel this way. And if you know anything, if you've lived a life long enough, you know that humans are just hardwired to be dissatisfied. And so while it can be really unhealthy to chase the number games and those places, it's also really just psychologically unhealthy for us because we don't really, we kind of don't have a plan for contentment. And that's a problem because that's where we find joy is in contentment. So this is a, this is, this is something that we're going to introduce to you guys. And eventually I think we're actually going to make another course that our coaches can retail on getting people into a maintenance process. And instead of it being a one week, two week, three week, four week process, it's actually going to be a one step, two step, three step, four step process like that so that you can guide your client at their pace through some of these steps of coming into, to real, I hate the word realistic, but really attainable goal setting that are healthy, right? That aren't rooted because what we do is we compare ourselves to other people. Your client's going to be doing that. They're going to be looking at their body and saying, okay, we always look, we, we always tend to notice our deficits. So no matter how much weight you've lost or how much your symptoms have improved, we're always still staring at the thing that we don't have, or we believe that we don't have. And this can just be really tough. And why it's so important, I think, for us coaches to kind of introduce a new concept and at least have it in our toolbox for people is because they might be, I believe that people are going to be more apt to work with you if you make this a comfortable place for them and they feel like there's an attainable destination, that they're working towards something that doesn't require so much sacrifice just to stay in or to necessarily get to. Okay. And I'm not talking about just settling or anything. We're talking about a state of real health and allowing the body to get into its own place instead of us manipulating things to decide what that place should look like. Cause half the time we're just ill-equipped to even do that. We're too emotionally driven or too, we're, we're out for comparison. Like I said, we live in measure and deficits, not our gains, not our positives. Okay. So it's like, we're never going to, you know, it, it's a, it's a, kind of a journey never fulfilled and that's very frustrating and it's very psychologically damaging and it can keep people from not not only from getting to the point they want to get to with their health but it can keep them from even entering it because it always feel, already just feels like a daunting process we start associating this level of sacrifice and work with what it takes to feel good about myself or be healthy and we we really want to shake that up a little bit so this is where i believe maybe you know the body positivity mo movement combined with the holistic health advocacy movement, you know, and real mental and emotional health can come together and create an amazing life baby here. Um, so what comes after protocol? Okay. So like, what are you going to do with your clients half the time? What are they working toward? Protocol is an awesome process to reset the gut microbiome and get us further get to know our bodies, our minds, our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and get further from the standard American diet 
and all this trash, right? And I know we're not supposed to, there's people that don't choose to call foods bad or good. I'm indifferent. Like I'm, I'm not going to call, I, I, I'm just more picky about what I call food is honestly it. If it's not whole real non-processed or lightly processed food, that's basically whole food, then I'm not going to call it food. I'm going to call it a food like substance. Okay. So I won't say there's a good or bad food. There's only good food, you know, but it may not be good for your body right now. Um, you may not react well to it. You may not like it. Okay. But it, food is, food is good. Food is nutrition. Food like substance is a problem. And so when we're substituting our need for nutrition and, and nutrients with food like substance, then we have, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a lot of issues arise. Okay. So it's not really about labeling everything, but it's really about identifying. So that's what we're right. We're really, most of the time we're trying to recalibrate people and pull them back from that. And then we're trying to reestablish a healthy or establish maybe for the first time a healthy gut microbiome because that's going to set people up for so much success with their metabolism with their mental health with their cravings with their impulsivity with their brain function with their skin health with their self-esteem with their energy with their sleep with i mean just so on and so forth right but what comes next okay we know that if a person's going to choose to go on protocol the way that we do protocol and, and they want to give it their all or they even just gain all the information that we put in the protocol, then it may start to feel really overwhelming to them. It may, they may associate it with, whoa, if this is what it takes to be healthy, like I only got so much gas in my tank. They say that with, you know, patients, it runs out in a day. Anybody who's a parent, right? Like we, our cup fills to a certain amount and then when it's gone, it's gone. Like you don't just keep creating more of it. And so I think that we need to take that into account when we're looking at long-term coaching strategies and really helping people. And I think it's absolutely pertinent to ourselves as well. Okay, so the problem with a lot of these, the, these ideas are getting into coaching or a lot of even the programs and strategies out there are that there's really no end in sight for people. Or at least it doesn't feel like it. If the end is a perceived physical perfection or a feeling that isn't rooted in some tangible, healthy, things, then we're going to have a problem, right? We're chasing something, so we're going to be happy. Who's ever been married before, right? In the beginning, it's all ooh la la, and then you realize there's a lot of work involved, right? When things get real, things get hard, and you've got to grow through the hard, and then you know, you got, but if it's all nothing but work, if it feels like, whoa, it's going to, this is what marriage is, then we're not going to want to do it. Like, what would, what would be the point? Okay, and that's where you see a lot of people pull away from stuff like that, you know, when there's not deal breaker situations because it's just too hard to sustain. And we don't want our health to be like that either. We don't want our relationships to be like that. We don't want our businesses to be like that. You know, that's why we break down our business. That's why we say, even in the training, you guys, like make two hours a 